Doctor puts the twins on the dying mom's chest, and five minutes later, a real miracle happens. We've all heard about the magical power of love in fairy tales and stories like Harry Potter, where Lily Potter's love for her son Harry was so strong that it was able to save his life and defeat the most powerful dark wizard there ever was. But apparently, the power of love isn't just a fairy tale. Doctors and nurses don't always get a chance to see patients after they've been discharged from the hospital. But it happened Friday. A pregnant mom, on life support with COVID-19, needed medical heroes to deliver her baby boy. When Tammy Cunningham entered the room at the IU Health Methodist Hospital on Friday, she didn't remember the people clapping. Many of the people smiling at Tammy and her family helped save her life two years ago. COVID took such a toll on all of us, but when it put an otherwise pregnant mom and a baby in danger, it was truly heartbreaking for us, said Dr. Michelle Cesana, Chief Medical Officer for IU Health Methodist Hospital. On May 3, 2021, Cunningham was seven months pregnant, diagnosed with COVID-19, pneumonia, and having trouble breathing. She left work for a local emergency room and then went to IU North. Tammy doesn't remember the ambulance ride that would take her to the hospital. The only other thing I remember is when they were starting on the ECMO. I could feel it. I remember screaming and crying because of how horrible it felt, said Cunningham. Medical staff put Tammy on life support. I was put in a coma on ECMO, said Cunningham. When I woke up from my coma, I was no longer pregnant. That's when I learned they delivered him. I'm sure they told me before they delivered him, but I don't remember. Her husband also had COVID-19 at the time. I was stuck at home, taking care of the other kids. I had to make decisions over the phone. I couldn't be there. It was just a really hard time for all of us, said Matt Cunningham. The hospital medical team delivered her baby, Calum, but it would be a month before Tammy could meet her son. The nurse put him in my arms, and that was the best feeling ever. I started crying and telling him how beautiful he was, she said. Calum will turn two in May. He's actually doing great. He's had RSV. He does have a chronic lung disease still, but they hope he can grow out of that, Tammy said. It's not been easy on Tammy. I have some memory problems still, working on that. I do have PTSD from all the trauma, so I'm working on that, she said. Calum is the couple's first boy. He has four sisters. He has a very spunky personality. He is an aggressive little boy. He loves to be aggressive. It's way different than having a girl, Tammy said. For the staff at IU Health Methodist and a grateful family, Friday's reunion was beautiful. I'm very grateful and thankful and happy. I've been waiting almost two years to meet everybody, Tammy said. He's our miracle. Another miracle happened to this family. An Atlanta mother was nearing her due date in March when she contracted coronavirus and fell gravely ill, but now she and her twin daughters are happy and healthy at home. Monique Cook was eight months along when she began experiencing symptoms and rushed to the hospital where she was told she'd undergo an emergency C-section. The mother of four soon fell into a coma. She told the Today Show this week and woke up five days later to learn she had already delivered her babies. Monique said the twins are her love babies, conceived after her husband Andrew came home from being stationed in Afghanistan. The couple were eagerly awaiting the arrival when, at eight months pregnant, Monique started experiencing coronavirus symptoms. I was at home and started feeling shortness of breath. I couldn't breathe, she said. My contractions started coming two minutes apart. I knew something was wrong. Her doctor told her to go straight to the hospital where they tried to help Monique breathe and got her a coronavirus test. They then sent her to labor and delivery, telling her that she was going to get an emergency C-section. They put my babies on my chest while I'm in a coma. The anesthesiologist came. He said, count back from 10. I counted back from 10. I said 10 and everything just went black. Though the delivery went quickly, Monique remained unconscious up to five days later and woke up in an entirely different hospital. I remember slowly waking up. I looked down, and I have no big stomach, no babies. I remember asking, where are my babies? That's when the young nurse said, oh, your babies, they're fine, she recalled. 
But though her twin daughters, August Sky and Angel Renee, were born on March 24th, it would be a while before she could see them in person and hold them. Monique remained isolated in the hospital for 11 days, then had to finish out her 14-day quarantine after being discharged before she could meet the twins. In that time, her husband, Andrew, sent pictures of the newborns to her nurse, who showed Monique while she recovered. Finally, she got to go home to her family, including her older daughters, Isis, 17, and Winter, 4, and she held her babies for the first time. The moment that I got to hold them was great, she said. It was just like my family is complete. Having such major things happen to her at the same time left her mostly in shock, she said, but she's incredibly grateful to the health care workers who took care of her. For somebody to fight for me that hard, it's meant for me to be here. I just want to tell them thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much because they were my family that whole 11 days. Without them, I wouldn't be here, she said. Monique was also treated to a surprise from the Today Show, a six-month supply of Pampers for her twins.